What's up you amazing hackers? Did you know that you can chain iDoors? Let me tell you how right now. Let's get into it, shall we? So iDoors are you guys know who like insecure direct object references you can access an object you're not supposed to. So say for example you have um, an invoice and that invoice has an identifier so you have your URL www.target.com slash invoice question mark and then you get your parameters so you will go like id equals one two three four etc so those are easy idors if you guys want to know more about those i'll leave you guys some uh, links in the cards up there you guys can click them um, if you guys want to know more about how to automate your idor search i'll leave a card up as well but you also have some more hard idors, some harder ones that that's not as easy to crack because those sequential IDs can also be replaced by UUIDs, which are unique identifiers. And those unique identifiers, they're often a really long random string. And that random string is going to be like uh, all kinds of numbers and letters. So it's going to be alphanumeric, which means that you have a whole lot of issues and uh, brute forcing that stuff you cannot just go like id equals one two three four you'll have like uh, id equals one eight seven a c b etc so you're not going to be able to brute force those you're going to need a quantum computer and those are not ready yet so if you really want to test for those and if you really want to raise the impact say for example you find an idor that has a uuid if you really want to raise the impact of that idor you're going to have to find an endpoint that shows you all of the UUIDs. So that's how you can chain your IDORs if they have a UUID in them. You can just say, for example, I'm going to read the endpoint that shows me all of the invoices and their identifiers. And then you can take that identifier and put them in the, in the URL. Now, there are different ways you can do this, of course, but I'm going to talk a lot more about that in another video. I'm going to show you guys my screen then. Um, but what I really want to give you guys is that you can also chain IDORs if there are UUIDs. So it, it's possible to raise your impact of those. Um, now, what I also want to tell you guys about the UUIDs, if you have them and you find like, a, a, let's say you find a, an invoice that you can read that you're not supposed to be able to read. If you find that and it has a UUID, then I wouldn't re that per se uh, immediately I would really spend my time just looking for endpoints that display all of those and uh, identifiers so if you really can't find one of course you can report it but it's going to probably be a low impact and if you want to raise that to a medium or a high you're going to have to find endpoints that list those identifiers so that's how you can chain that kind of stuff now it's also possible that a link is made up of different more than one UUID. I'm going to give you guys an example again. Let's say you have a website and on that website you can upload your documents. So you have your own folder and in that folder you can make more folders. And all of those folders have UUID as well. And then you want the UUID of the document as well. So you're going to have to chain multiple endpoints together to find the UUIDs that uh, compose the URL. Now, what I mean by that is you're going to have to find one endpoint that lists you all of the different folders. Then you're going to have to find an endpoint that lists all of the folders in that folders, if you have any, of course, if that's possible. And you're also going to have to find an endpoint that lists the UUIDs of the uh, items in that folder so you're going to have to chain multiple things together in that instance and it's not going to be as easy but guys i'm telling you nothing is impossible you just have to go try harder that's what oscp taught me and i really stand by that you really have to try harder i made the mistake recently of reporting some idors like just uuids but after digging some deep so a lot deeper i found uh, ways to get the endpoints for that so like i just described to you guys so it's it's really possible but you guys just have to be really careful when you do uh, that kind of stuff you know you just have to dig really deep and one of my previous videos like i think it was the five habits of successful bug bounty hunter i told you guys that successful bug bounty hunters 
there are a couple things they do and one of the things they do is really dig deep and also of course i think you guys know that from my videos that i really like to dig deeper um so if you guys want to find out about that i also have a video about that it's going to be on a card now in the up on top on the screen somewhere over there and uh, one else one other thing before i end this video if you guys can tell me what this thing is like over here if you guys know that put it in the description below because uh you guys know that i'm a fan of something that used to be there i'm a fan of something that's behind me over there i don't know if you saw, saw it already but uh, if you guys know what it is put it in the description in the comments below i really want to know if you guys know thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one bye everybody <laughs>